Hello everyone, my name is Gabby and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Review. This time we're reviewing episode 34. So Goku is lost, although no one is really sure why. But next up is Piccolo. While Goku says Piccolo doesn't have a chance, Piccolo tries to win by charging up the Makanko Sapo. And once Piccolo binds Frost with his arm, it looks like he may have a chance of victory. Until he suddenly feels faint, just like Goku was. And Frost uses that opportunity to knock him out, securing his win. But then Jaco intervenes. He says Frost has been using a concealed weapon to make the both of them dizzy, which is against the rules. It turns out he was right. Frost has been cheating, and it also turns out that Frost is actually evil. He only just pretends to be a good person. So Frost is disqualified until Vegeta steps in. He says he's going to fight Frost next, even if he's disqualified, and Piccolo gives up his turn to let that happen. So, what did I like about this episode? First of all, I actually really did enjoy the fight between Frost and Piccolo. While some of the animation is being, was a bit kind of off at times, I did like the way it seemed to be choreographed. I liked the concept of the fight. The fact that Goku immediately pretty much tells Piccolo that he stands no chance, but Piccolo tries to win basically with strategy. He's like, okay, I can't beat him on a one-on-one -on -one fight, so I'll just basically do what happened the last time I had to, I, I managed to beat an opponent who was much stronger than me, and that's just charge up the Makanko Sapo for as long as I can, so that one attack will definitely hit him and will definitely beat him. And I thought that was really interesting. As well as also Piccolo using his eye beams and his stretchy arms, like that was that was what I wanted to see when I saw Piccolo fighting. I'm just like, why don't we just use some of his old techniques that he used to use and he doesn't use anymore. They did that, and that's awesome. So I was satisfied with that. And hey, there was that part of the beginning where Chi-Chi actually kind of showed affection for Goku and just sort of sat down there and she, like immediately rushed to his side and made sure he was okay. I mean, that is something I honestly don't think Toei has ever really done, so that's cool. As for what I didn't like about this episode, it's basically the outcome of pretty much the entire fight of Piccolo and Frost. Before this episode came out, there were a bunch of rumored episode titles that were leaked, and the way those episode titles, were, it seemed to imply that Piccolo actually beat Frost. And in Super, what actually ended up happening was a little bit different, in that, well, Piccolo technically kind of beat Frost by just because Frost got disqualified. After that, it didn't even matter because now Vegeta is fighting Frost, even though there's kind of no reason for it. So if you really put all that together, it makes you realize Piccolo did not need to be there. The plot could have immediately gone from Goku fighting Frost to Vegeta fighting Frost and literally nothing in the plot would change, which makes you, ask, makes you wonder, why is Piccolo even there? If he wasn't going to contribute anything, why did you even make him a character there in the first place? Once again, just like with Margin Buu, this feels like a big bait and switch. You put a character there, you make us think the character's going to do something, only for their contribution to be ultimately completely meaningless. It's really sad because the use of the supporting cast was one of the things I really wanted to see in this tournament. I wanted to see that if that Dragon Ball Super could be more than just the show about Goku and Vegeta. Let's put it this way. Piccolo would technically could have continued, but he willingly gave his spot up to Vegeta. If that isn't emblematic of what Dragon Ball Super has been doing lately, I don't even know what is. And then there's the revelation that Frost is in fact evil. All that stuff about him protecting the peace of the universe, that was all basically lies. He was kind of lying. He just pretends to be a good guy so he can actually go and use that all to his own advantage and get more money and be all that the usual kind of evil real estate shark that Freezer was. I'll be completely honest, I think this plot point is absolutely ridiculously stupid. For two reasons. One, I was really looking forward to the idea that universe, like Universe 6 was the good counterpart universe and Universe 7 had all the evil counterparts. I thought that was something they were actually planning on doing. I thought that was like a theme that was going to be in the, like this entire arc and now that Frost is evil and just as evil as Frieza, that it clearly is not the case. So basically I'm kind of upset because Toei successfully trolled me. They made me believe something was going to happen and something completely different is now happening and I don't even know what to think. But even then, I still don't like this revelation because it's lazy. It's just like, oh look, here's a, here's a new character. Um, he looks a bit like, he looks like Frieza and he basically is Frieza except he pretends to be good. But besides that, he's Frieza. It makes Frost an incredibly bland character and, you know, before he had uniqueness to him because he was like, he wasn't Frieza even though he looked like him. Now, he looks like Frieza, he acts like Frieza, he sounds like Frieza. 
What's so special about him? Like, what is so interesting? There is nothing interesting about him anymore. It's just like such an obvious idea that like, hey look, he looks like Frieza, he's the counterpart of Frieza, so clearly he's evil like Frieza. I thought they were going to change the formula, they were going to do something un unexpected that they decided to not. And then at the end of the episode, Vegeta demanded that he was going to fight Frost. Which isn't really a good or bad thing, it's just something that kind of baffles me. Because Frost is disqualified. This fight does not need to happen, and yet it's still happening. Like, this seems to be something that's going to be plot in plot relevant for the next episode, I think? I don't know? It just, it's just really confusing me that it's almost making me feel like, did they just do this so Vegeta could fight Frost? So Vegeta could fight Frieza again? I mean, we just had this in Resurrection F, that's the thing that really annoys me. Like, we literally just had a Frieza rematch in Resurrection F, and now we're doing it again. Like, why can't they do something original? Something that they literally, they didn't do literally like a few months ago. As for next episode, continuing on the tradition of this review, I have no idea what's going on. Apparently Vegeta is going to fight Frost, but apparently Hit is going to do something. Champer and Beera seem to be flickering, things seem to be happening, and the episode title doesn't seem to tell much, much about what's going on. You know, to be honest, it kind of feels like this whole entire tournament setting was just a farce. Like, it kind of feels like it's already starting to unravel, and there's only really been of like two episodes, and the tournament setting already seems like it's going to unravel. So, I'm just wondering, was this intentional? Was this entire tournament just a bait and switch? Were we not supposed to pay attention to it at all? Is it that like, you know, maybe there's something more hiding behind the wings, and that's going to show up like next episode or the episode after? And that really this tournament was just a way, an excuse to get all the characters together? Because really, that's what it's almost seeming like to me. But then again, I was completely wrong about the Piccolo vs. Frost thing, so I could be completely wrong about this. And for all I know, the tournament could still continue just the way it is now. So yeah, that was Dragon Ball Super Episode 34. I'll be honest, there was a lot of missed opportunities in this episode. I was some really stupid things. I felt like they could have made Piccolo do a bit more in the grand scheme of things. I felt like they could have made Frost fit more than just a generic Frieza clone. I felt like there was it was just a lot of things that I really did not enjoy. But really, my raw reaction is just one of just shock. Toei successfully trolled me. They took me for a ride. They I thought they were going to do something. They're doing something completely different. And I honestly don't know what to think about these new plot developments until I actually know where they're leading towards. If they're leading towards something at all. It's a terrible time for Super to get on a week break because now we're going to have to wait for two weeks to see where the story is going. But consider me intrigued because I don't know what is happening right now and I really want to know what is happening right now because that way I can just sort of judge what I, whether this is good or not. So this is Gabby signing out and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye guys.